Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another one of my course vlogs. And we're back out here at Desert Willow. The last nine holes you're gonna see on the Mountain View course. If you're new to the channel, please click the subscribe button down below. I'd love to have you back here week after week for some more golf. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up so I know you're out there. Let's head on out to the 10th hole. Here we go. Nine more holes to go out here at Desert Willow and the Mountain View course. Well. We got the mountains in view here on the 10th hole. A longer par four for this golf course, sitting over 400 yards. It has a tight fairway here. Bunkers on the left are safer than the trees and the water on the right. But I guess if you go way to the right, you are back on the 9th hole. That's not so bad. It's a big, wide, generous fairway, though. Just knock it down there. And this green is sitting out in a peninsula over the water. It's a gorgeous two-tier green with that hump running right through the center, and this pin is up on that back tier. Now, just playing a little cut off the tee, I was not afraid of the water down the right as I just was controlling the ball here off the tee, playing it off those left bunkers. A smooth sandwich for me here. The new one goes about 120 yards, so I had to take a little bit off of this and kind of made a little awkward swing, hit it okay, and it was 10 feet under the hole. But coming over that ridge to the back of this green, it's back downhill, and this putt rolled out a lot further than I thought. Ultimately, though, it was four feet away. It's a par. We're still three under par as we head to the 11th. A treacherous par three, easily the most difficult on the entire golf course. It's all over water today, and luckily, the pin is in the front, which should take all the sand out of play. Unless, of course, you hit a terrible hook off the tee, and the ball goes long and left into this back bunker. I was short-sighted here to the flag and tried to play a cute bunker shot to just trickle over the edge of the bunker, and I just didn't get it out. Now we're having to really scramble. A, oh man, that was a stupid shot out of the bunker. Just put way too much on it. And here comes the bogey putt that from 30 feet could have made one heck of a four on this hole. But ultimately, I'm gonna have to swallow that double bogey. Thankfully, we have the easiest hole on the entire golf course next. The 12th hole here is a very reachable par five, sitting only 500 yards from the tips. You just gotta make sure your drive hits some sort of green grass out there. If you're in these bunkers, they have high lips to them, not really allowing you to hit a long iron out of them, forcing you to lay up. But if you hit the green grass, you'll have a go at it here. Hopefully it's under 250 yards, allowing you to chase something up and on to the front of the screen from the left-hand side. Today's hole location, though, is tucked up on a little shelf on the back right of this green, right over those bunkers. Now, the situation of the day, our money game had been on hold for this hole as we were transitioning into the third round, starting on the 13th hole. So all of a sudden, I had nothing on the line and I could just free up. I just made a double bogey and I'm ready to attack. Another seven iron here, getting a little redemption with the exact same club, hitting it to five feet for Eagle. I tentatively knocked that one down there. It's a comfy birdie, but man, I would have loved to gotten both of those strokes back immediately on that par five. Now we're switching into the last part of our little six hole match. I'm sitting all square for the day, so I'm trying to make a little bit of money here with my partner. And we're starting on the par three 13th here, another 200 yard par three. Again, another seven iron for me here from about 190 yards. I tugged this one just a little bit and it ended up just pin high on the left side of the green. 
I'm gonna have to get up and down though, and the green just runs enough away from this hole. I just couldn't get this chip shot close. An awkward 12 feet here for par, and that was to push the hole. Not gonna be one down through one, and we'll see how we do as we come down this closing stretch. The 14th here, the most difficult hole on the back nine, simply because of the length. 450 yards from the tips. Make sure your drive goes left of those fairway bunkers. They again have big lips on them and might not allow you to hit a shot all the way to the green. You'll see there those players are right out in the generous landing area. And from there, you're going to have about 200 yards into this green that is well protected on all sides by bunkers. And this front hole location seems to be a little bit more accessible, not really bringing much of the sand into play. And now we're gonna lose our swing for a little bit. A double cross, aim left and it goes left. Oh boy, we're in between the 14th and 15th hole here. Gonna have to hit it under the tree I'm sitting under and over the tree in front of me. Mission accomplished with the five iron, but I sent it long all the way over the green. Now we're trying to get up and down all the way back to this front hole location so I have some room, but that chip shot just went on me straight away and ran all the way off the front of the green. I did not have a lot of confidence in my short game, but standing over this chip, I had a feeling I could make it. Not quite. It's a tap-in bogey, back-to-back -back bogeys to start this last match. That's not great. And I think I'm also back to even par. Well, it's not really on my mind today. It's really the matches that are on my mind. So two down, four to play. Here on the 15th hole, another long par four that's slightly heading back up the hill. A lot more bunkers dot both sides of this hole, but it is a very wide corridor out there for you to play for. And then it narrows down into this tiny little green with a pin, fortunately, sitting square in the center bullseye. Now I'm setting up here for the cut once again, hoping it would bleed a little bit to the right, but another double cross off the tee. This one went a little bit left, and I was very fortunate to find the ball on the grass, and I just had to find some way to swing and hit it. The ball was nearly on my toes here, and I just had to find something, go for it, and use my instincts. Holy cow, this was a golf shot. A little punch seven iron bumped up to the front of the green, giving me this 60-foot look for birdie. Going from nearly losing my ball to having a six-footer for par, I'm happy with it. But I'm not happy missing the putt and losing the hole. We're now dormy three down with three to go. My partner and I have to win every single hole from here on out, to avoid losing this last bet, and for me, losing money on the day. Not something I like to do. So here on the 16th, I decided to go for broke. It's kind of a drivable par four, but really, not really. You can hit it over the corner, and that water is about 340 from the tee. I knew I couldn't get there, and I also knew driver would take all the bunkers out of play. And the driver had been going left, so I played for the left. Just a little turn over draw, cut the corner, and I have 40 yards into the flag. Playing a simple little bump and run here, trying to get the ball to check. It checked up beautifully on the second or third hop. Here it is six feet, and we rolled in the birdie to win the hole. And now we're only two down with two to play. It's amazing what momentum can do for your confidence. I stood on this 17th tee knowing I wasn't going to lose. I didn't know how, but I knew I wasn't going to lose. 
a very short par four here, only 342 yards. It's about 315 to the front edge. Avoid all the bunkers here and that wash across the fairway. Laying back is a great option, but my driver just worked for me and I just wanted to put on a show in front of everybody else. Now I just barely pushed it out to the right hand side, but I was still only 50 yards away from the green. I thought I was going to be down in that wash, but fortunately it caught up in the overseeded rye. I had a nice fluffy lie here and chipped it onto the green, just barely rolling out onto that back fringe. I was actually very surprised that it didn't come off of that back hill towards the hole because it was just a little trickle putt. Just get it to go and it was going to roll all the way down to the hole. My opponents shot themselves out on that hole and that par won it for us, bringing us to Dormy 1 and we're only one down with one to play. Fortunately for me, it's go time. It's a par 5 sitting right in front of us. 540 yards from the tips is reachable for me as long as we can get the drive in play. Bunkers left and right and of course we have a lot of water to deal with as well. That lake on the right is about 320 from the tee and just maybe reachable for me, but there's a lot of green grass out there to play with. And as we come into the green, it's a gorgeous finish here on the Mountain View course. Lay up to the right hand side to avoid all that water, but if you get one down there, you might just have a look and there's a little bit of room to chase a long club up the front of the green. Now I played another smooth turnover draw, but just lost this one a little bit to the left and caught a fortunate lie here in the rough. Oh man, this is a nasty downhill lie off the backside of the bunker here, and I was able to get a four iron flush turning down the fairway and just rolling out here short of the green. Now, up and down for birdie would win the hole for us and push the last match, letting me come out of here with no skin out of my pocket. But I got to sink this 15 footer to make it all happen. Let's go. Subscribe. Like the video, and we'll see you next time.